Hi, and welcome to your next video in Computer Science for Everyone. This time we're going to talk about how to get user input from a programming perspective. So here we have our dog class and the printing class that we use to print out details of the dogs we created in the previous programming exercise. Now, let's try to ask the user what food and what age these dogs are so that then we can print their details out. Of course, the first thing to do is create the scanner object that we're going to use to read the uh, the input from the user. So remember we create a new scanner and inside it we put where we're getting the input from. The input stream, the standard input stream. And of course we need to tell Java where we are going to be able to find the scanner code that will let us create scanner objects. Just like we have the dog code that lets us create dogs, somewhere in our computer there is a scanner class that has the code in it and lets us create new scanners. So this code can be found in our Java installation folder, which is the Java folder, inside that folder there is a folder called util and then inside the util folder we have the class scanner that has the code so in order to tell java where to find this code we need to import this code into our class so here we're importing the code that is found in java folder inside this folder this util folder and inside that is the scanner that we're importing in this case the full stop just means inside so scanner is inside util which is inside java Okay, so we import the scanner and we create a new scanner object which we've called scan, although we can call whatever we want. I'm just going to use scan for now because it's simple to remember. And then we have to scan the food that Charlie is going to be eating. But first we have to ask the user. So in order to ask the user we will simply do system.out.println What food does Charlie like to eat? And then, after we've asked that, we expect the user to put something in. And the way we read it is by doing scan. And inside our scanner object, there is a method that will let us read strings. And this is the next line method. So scan.nextLine will read all the text until we find a new line. So until the line ends. Okay, so this is the food that Charlie likes to eat, and then we can do the same thing, system.out.println. What is Charlie's age? And here, instead of reading a line, we want to read a number. So we do that by reading the next integer, which is what we expect the user will put in. However, we are not storing these values anywhere, so we need to create variables that will let us store the food and the age of Charlie so that then we can pass it to the constructor and we can create an object with those values. Notice I'm calling it Charlie input age because we have Charlie age down here and we can't create the same variable twice. Oh, this should be an int. So, Charlie food is going to be the next line after we've asked the user what the food is. And Charlie input age is going to be the next integer after we've asked the user for the, for the age. So in here, instead of dog food, we put Charlie food. And here we put Charlie input age. Let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, so we are asked, what food does Charlie like to eat? And we can put here, dog food. What is Charlie's age? Let's put five. And there we have it. Dog food stays the same because we've said that Charlie is eating dog food. And then the age is five because we've said that it's five. So this is not too complicated. Let's try to repeat the same thing for Bernie. Obviously, we're going to have to 
change these for Bernie and these for Bernie as well. Bernie food and Bernie input age because we can't create the same variable twice. Bernie food is going to go instead of bacon. Bernie input age is going to go instead of six. And there we have it. This is our fully interactive program that we've created and that will let us specify the food and the age for both dogs. So what food does Charlie like to eat? Let's say chicken. And then what is Charlie's age? Five. Ah, so this is one of the big problems that you will sometimes encounter in programming and that if you see it like this, you'll be like, I have absolutely no idea what the problem can be. However, there is a solution to this problem and it is a fairly simple solution. The problem here is that we have skipped this line and we have jumped from what food does Bernie like to eat straight to what is Bernie's age. And now it is waiting for an age. But he's not eating anything because we've skipped that line. So what could the problem be here? The first time we did this, we were waiting for a line. We were waiting for any number of characters or numbers or anything and then the new line character that we've talked about already. When we found that new line character, we accepted the input up to that new line character, and we moved on to the next line of code. So here we found chicken and then a new line when we pressed enter in our keyboard, and then we moved on to what is Charlie's age, and then we waited for an integer. The problem here is that we wrote five and then we pressed enter. Five was read by next int, but enter wasn't read by next int, and the enter remained there in our input. So then the next time we called next line, that enter was there waiting to be read, and so it got read by next line. So essentially, what Bernie food contains is just a new line or nothing because the new line gets ignored by next line but everything up to the new line which in this case is nothing because between the five and the new line there was nothing is what gets assigned to Bernie food. In order to fix this we need to tell the scanner to read up to the next line and that our following input is going to be what starts in the following line. Let's try again. What food does Charlie like to eat? Chicken, five, and there we go. Let me explain that problem again. We had Charlie food was everything up to the new line character. Once we found the new line character, we assigned everything that was before that to the word, to, this, to the variable Charlie food. Then, we asked for Charlie's age, and we got the integer that was given to us by the user. However, the new line that remained after we pressed enter was still there waiting to be read. So the next time we called new line, this enter was read, but there was nothing to assign to Bernie food. So essentially what we had assigned was an empty string or nothing. And then naturally we kept going and we asked for Bernie's age because we already had the value for Bernie food. It was just empty because we'd pressed enter too many times. Or well, that's what the program thought. So what is Bernie's age? And then we read the integer, and that's that. If after reading the integer five, we read the new line character, the next time we ask for the next line, it is waiting for the following new line character. So it gives us the chance to put some more text in. This was one of the many problems you will encounter in programming. And the first time I found this problem, I also didn't know what the problem could be. So what I did, what I, I went into the internet, I went to Google, and I looked for next line not working. And just with that search, within five minutes, I had found 
a, have a website that would explain uh, what the problem was and how to solve it. In this case, I have explained it to you, but any other error you might find, it isn't necessarily obvious to me that uh, so that I will know the answer to your problem. So in many occasions, it is better to look for the answer yourself so that you would learn how, how to program the answer yourself instead of having someone explain it to you all the time. Of course, if you have any questions about understanding something that I'm teaching here, asking questions at the right side of the page in Udemy is the correct way to go. So, we have seen how to ask the user for input. We have read strings and we have read integers. And then we have given those values to our dog from the dog class that we created in the previous lecture. And then we've displayed the info that we've read from the user. So let's move into the next lecture where we're going to be going over how to split the flow of the program. So I'll wait for you in the next lecture.